Hello my gorgeous friends of Webflow, it's your friendly neighbor Francesco from Supasaito here. Today we're diving into one of the most satisfying interactions I've ever built in Webflow. Draggable cards that you can toss left or right just like you're swiping through a stack of instant photos. We're going to look at how it works, how to customize it and how you can use it even with CMS content. And yes, it's all no code for you. If you're looking forward to it as much as I am, stick around and if you find my videos helpful and want to support my work, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. But now, if you're ready, let's dive in! First off, we're going to look at two examples. One uses static cards and the other pulls its content from a CMS collection. This way, we can make sure the structure we're building is flexible and works in any context. Alright, let's start from the top, <laughs> literally, with a section element. I've added a combo class called CC Overflow Hidden, which just sets the overflow property to hidden. Why? Well, when we throw a card off screen, it technically moves outside the boundaries of the section. If we don't hide that overflow, we'll get an awkward horizontal scroll bar or just cards awkwardly sticking out of the layout. So yeah, overflow hidden is our friend here. Inside the section, we've got our usual main container, which this time just gives us a bit of breathing room. Vertical and horizontal padding, nothing fancy. Then we've got section content wrapper. Again, a pretty standard structural wrapper that doesn't play an active role in the interaction. Next, after the heading, comes the gallery outer wrapper, and here's where things start to get spicy. This div is set to display flex and align content center. Just to center the reset button we'll talk about in a moment. We'll also give it a height of 80vh, because that's how tall we want our cards to be. We also set position relative and this part is key. Why? Because the absolutely positioned card container inside it needs a relative parent to latch onto. That card container, you guessed it, is the gallery list wrapper and we'll look at it closely in just a second. But the real MVP here is the attribute. If you click on gallery outer wrapper and head over to the element settings panel, you'll see fc-draggable-card equals wrapper. That attribute is how our script knows, hey, this is the zone that contains draggable cards. It also wraps the reset button, so everything that controls this interaction is contained neatly in one place. Speaking of buttons, inside gallery outer wrapper, we've got buttons wrapper, which is a flex box with two buttons. The first one is just a regular link, maybe pointing to a projects page or gallery. But the second one is where the magic happens. It's an actual button element, not a link, because it's not meant for navigation. It's meant to trigger a reset. We created it as a custom element and changed its tag to button from the settings panel. And then we gave it the attribute fc-draggable-card equals reset. That's what tells the script, this is the button that brings all the cards back. Alright, now let's talk about the fun part. Inside the gallery outer wrapper, we've got our gallery list wrapper. This is just a div block with position absolute and all the offsets top, right, bottom, left set to zero, so it fills the whole parent, which is why the parent needs to be relative. Simple and effective. We also set the pointer events property to none. By doing that, we can make sure that after throwing away all the cards, we can actually click on the buttons, which sit beneath the gallery list wrapper. Inside that, we have gallery list, which is a flex container that centers its children and takes up the full width and height. But now, the heart of it all, the gallery list item. 
Each item has height 100%, so it stretches inside the container. And position absolute, because we want the cards stacked on top of each other. We also set the pointer events property back to auto, otherwise they would be non-interactive, so non-draggable, because of the pointer events property set to none on the gallery list wrapper element. Each item gets a combo class, either cc-odd or cc-even, based on their position. That's just to give them a little tilt, either to the left or to the right, to make the stack feel more dynamic and playful. Except the top card, of course. That one is dead center, no tilt. But the real juice? Go to the element settings panel, and you'll see that each gallery list item has fc draggable card equals component. That's how the script knows this is a draggable card. What's great is that everything else animation duration, throw distance, rotation, delay is configurable via attributes. But you don't have to set them, because we've got sensible defaults built in. So you can get started with just the bare minimum and customize later if you want to. Inside each card, We've got an image with class gallery item image. We gave it height 100% and with auto manually, so it scales nicely in every browser. We also gave it a 12 pixel white border, kind of like a Polaroid vibe, and a softbox shadow to give it some depth. That's it, no attributes needed here. Now, before we test this out, since we're using GSUB Draggable, we need to activate GSUB and the Druggable plugin inside our project. That's why, as usual, we have to do one, two, three, four, and five. Once that's done, publish, open the live link, and hover over the top card. Boom! It rotates and slides slightly to the right, giving the user a subtle hint. Hey, try dragging me. So let's do it. Click, drag, toss. Left, right, it's super satisfying. Once all the cards are gone, we can hit the reset button and bam, we're back to the start. And now, quick word about responsiveness. There's not much to change here. On tablet, we set object fit cover on the images to make sure they don't stretch weirdly. Nothing changes on landscape. On mobile portrait we shrink the wrapper a little bit and center it using margin auto and we also reduce the border size to keep things clean on smaller screens. Okay, so what's actually happening under the hood? Well, the code lives inside a component called Druggable Card Script. If you double click it, you'll find a single embed element with a script inside. The code is fully commented, just in case you want to geek out and dive deeper. But here's the gist. First, we grab every wrapper that has the attribute fc draggable card equals wrapper. Then, we look inside each one for any card with the attribute component. When the page loads or the user hits reset, we grab the top card, add a hover animation to it and initialize its draggable behavior. All the magic, like rotation, throw distance, delay, is controlled through HTML attributes, with fallback values if nothing set. Want to customize the behavior? Scroll to the bottom of the page and you'll find all the documentation you need, list of attributes, what they do and what defaults they fall back to. Here are some of the key ones. FC draggable card rotation. How sensitive the rotation is to dragging. Default is 45 degrees. FC draggable card reset duration. How fast the card returns to center when released if we didn't cross the threshold and default value is 0.2 seconds. Then we have FC draggable card throw duration. How long it takes to throw a card off screen. Default is 0.5 seconds. Then 
FC Druggable Card Throw Distance, how far the card gets tossed. Default value is 1000 pixels. Then, FC Druggable Card Throw Rotation, how much the card spins when tossed. Default value is 45 degrees. Next, FC Druggable Card Threshold, how far you need to drag to trigger a throw. Default is 100 pixels. Then, FC Druggable Card Delay, how long to wait before initializing the next car? Default is 0 seconds. Finally, we have FC Druggable Card Ease. What easing function to use throughout the whole experience? Default is power4.out. And we also added a link to the GSAP easing functions documentation. Again, none of these are required, but if you want control, they're there for you. Okay. Let's see how this works with CMS content. The setup is basically identical. The only difference, we're using a collection list and our cards have both images and text. Quick shout out to my friend Lydia, the content in this section comes straight from her portfolio. If you want to check out her work, the link is in the description. Before diving into the page structure, let's look at the collection itself. We've got thumbnail image, a short description, some tags for scope or context, a numeric field to sort the items, and of course the default name and slug fields. Back to the layout, same structure, section with overflow hidden, main container, section content wrapper, heading, now we've got a projects outer wrapper. From a CSS standpoint, it's nearly identical to the gallery outer wrapper. We just added a min height to make room for text. It also has the attribute fc-draggable-card equals wrapper, just like before. Inside that, we've got the same buttons wrapper with one link and one reset button with the reset attribute. Then we've got projects list wrapper and projects list which mirror the structure we saw before. Each project list item has the fc-draggable-card equals component attribute, just like the static version. Now, what's inside each item? There's a projects item content wrapper that uses flex layout, adds padding, and sets the width relative to the viewport. The cards have a wide background, a subtle grey border, and a box shadow for death. Then we have the thumbnail image, styled with projects item image, full width, aspect ratio 1, and object fit cover. Then we have a heading, bound to the name field, a paragraph, bound to the description, and a text element, bound to the tags. Now, since we cannot manually add combo classes like cc-odd or cc-even in a collection list, we use structure selectors. Select the collection item, go to the selector dropdown and choose things like last item, so the top card has no rotation, even items, rotate minus 3 degrees, and odd items, rotate plus 3 degrees. That's it. Now. Open the live link again, and you'll see that we can toss the cards in both sections independently. Reset them individually, and just have fun with it. So, what did we build today? We took a bunch of cards, whether static or powered with by the CMS, and turned them into something fun dynamic and surprisingly satisfying to interact with. We explored how to throw them off the screen, in a very professional way of course, how to reset the whole thing, and how to make the entire experience feel smooth, responsive and customizable. And yeah, we did peek at the code, but only to see how ridiculously easy it is to plug and play with attributes while GSAP do all the heavy lifting. Whether you're building a portfolio, a product showcase, or just want to let your users yeet your content into the void with style, this setup's got you covered. 
Everything you saw today is part of a fully clonable Webflow project, and you'll find all the documentation, tools, and links in the description below. And if you found this helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more Webflow tips and tricks. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Matane!